Welcome to Alphabet Soup of Limb Alignment in the Frontal Plane. Our objectives here are to define the normal angles in the frontal plane and an overview of how to draw lower extremity axes and angles to be used throughout the course. First of all, normal limb alignment is defined as collinearity of the hip, knee, and ankles. The mechanical axis should fall through the center third of the knee. The mechanical axis line is a straight line connecting the center of two joints. There's a mechanical axis line of the entire lower extremity, as shown here, of just the femur, and of just the tibia. There are also anatomic axis lines. There is no anatomic axis line of the entire lower extremity, however there is one of just the femur and just the tibia, as shown here. The anatomic axis line is defined as a mid-diaphyseal line through the intramedullary canal of the bone. Anatomic and mechanical axis lines can both be used in planning. The anatomic and mechanical axis of the femur are very different, while the anatomic and mechanical axis of the tibia are very similar. We'll review this in more detail. In the femur, there is an angle known as the anatomic mechanical axis angle where we describe the relationship between the anatomic and mechanical axes of this bone segment. The mechanical axis of the femur goes from the center of the hip joint, the center of the femoral head, to the center of the knee joint, splitting the condyles. The anatomic axis is defined as a mid-diaphyseal line halfway between outer cortices along the axis of the bone. The normal anatomic mechanical axis angle is 7 degrees, and it varies between 5 and 9 degrees depending on stature and several other variables. Typically, the anatomic axis of the femur crosses the knee joint about a centimeter medial to the mechanical axis of the femur, just off the medial femoral condyle. For the tibia, the mechanical and anatomic axes are parallel, therefore there is no anatomic mechanical angle for the tibia. To return to the mechanical axis of the entire lower extremity, just a reminder that it's through the center of the femoral head down to the center of the ankle joint. In the normal limb, this line passes within 3 to 4 millimeters of the center of the knee joint. On average, this is slightly medial to the center in asymptomatic patients. The mechanical axis is termed deviated if it passes outside of the normal zone. Valgus is present if the mechanical axis passes lateral to the knee joint. If the mechanical axis passes medial to the center of the knee, then a varus deformity is present. There are various ways of quantifying this, but in this course we use mechanical axis deviation as the primary means. All of these angles help to be more specific when describing lower extremity malalignment, and the strict use of them and restoration of their normal values will create normal alignment as well as eliminating joint line obliquity. These angles account for the shape of the femur and tibia, as well as joint alignment of the hip, knee, and ankle. The joint line is a line to represent the orientation of the joint in space. For the proximal femur, it goes from the center of the femoral head to the tip of the greater trochanter. For the distal femur, it touches the medial and lateral condyles. For the proximal tibia, a line approximating the plateau defines the joint line at the knee. In the distal tibia, a line approximating the plafond defines the ankle joint line. When this joint line intersects with an axis line, we create a joint line angle. We will go through the nomenclature as well as naming conventions shortly. The joint angle defines the position of the joint relative to the axis of the bone segment. You'll be hearing this a lot from us. Analyzing the joint angles is the primary means of evaluating a deformity. To define the mechanical joint angles of the femur, we draw the mechanical axis of the femur and the joint lines of the proximal and distal femur. To define the joint lines of the tibia, 
we draw the mechanical axis of the tibia and the joint lines of the tibia, both proximally and distally. The joint line convergence angle of the knee is defined as the angle between the distal femoral joint line and the proximal tibial joint line. To be within normal limits, it needs to be less than 2 degrees. Abnormalities in the joint line congruency angle indicate soft tissue laxity, which can be a complicating factor in correcting lower extremity alignment. We'll now review the angle nomenclature. While you could choose any angle, there is a convention that's been established over the last several decades since the initial publishing of their description. The first letter will be an A or an M, indicating anatomic or mechanical angles. The second letter indicates whether it's a medial or a lateral angle. The third letter gives you orientation in space of proximal or distal. The fourth letter defines the bone segment. And A means angle. Therefore, the MLDTA is the mechanical lateral distal tibial angle. And the ALDTA is the anatomic lateral distal tibial angle. However, since the tibial axes are parallel, we will often drop the A and the M when we're describing the tibia. The mechanical medial proximal tibial angle, or more commonly called medial proximal tibial angle, is known as the MPTA. The mechanical lateral distal femoral angle, or MLDFA, averages 87 degrees and is different the anatomic lateral distal femoral angle, which averages 81 degrees. We need to be very careful when analyzing the femur, whether we're using anatomic or mechanical axis planning. We will review this multiple times throughout the course. The mechanical lateral proximal femoral angle is 90 degrees, with a range of 85 to 95. The anatomic medial proximal femoral angle is 84 degrees, with an average of 80 to 89 degrees. The decision was made that the average angle would always be less than 90, hence the choice of medial versus lateral for these two angles. It may be worthwhile to take a screen capture of this image to keep next to you throughout the course as it will help you maintain a reference for normal angles as we review deformity analysis. Thank you.